I'm happy to be back here in Charleston this morning. See this great class in front of me. All the family and friends gathered around. You know, it's always good to be in Charleston in May. Always good to be in Charleston around the time the Citadel graduates. Commander Molina, thank you for the uh, for the opening uh, remarks, the prayer that uh, sort of set the tone for the day, and the regimental band did a great job with the uh, with the music to mark this special occasion. General Walters, members of the Board of Visitors, past presidents of the Citadel, faculty, staff, distinguished members of the extended Citadel community, thank you for inviting me here today. It's a personal and professional honor that uh, I don't know that anything could, could beat this. And to the class of 2019 here in front of me, I want to thank you for the privilege of having the opportunity to address you today. However, we need to get something straight right up front. You're actually competing for maybe the best, second best class in the history of the college. <laughs> the best one is 79. Look, everybody here knows this. You've also noticed we're running the school, perhaps, and the Alumni Association. You've got a long way to go before you're going to be able to make those claims. So. <laughs> I can also tell you, though, that second best is wide open, and I encourage you to strive for that honor. Uh, we'll come back to that debate a little bit later on in my remarks. So I've been where you are, and without a doubt, decades from now, one of you is going to be standing right here talking to some future class. Forty years ago next week, I sat out in front of Bond Hall on a sunny morning under the magnolia trees with 488 other graduates, members of the class of 79. Some of those men are here today. Three of them are on the platform with me today. Some of them died in the service of their country. Others are scattered around the world right now, leading, engaging, continuing to fight the good fight. I'm pleased to receive this honorary doctorate. I have to tell you though, that there have to be some professors, some long since passed away, who are spinning in their graves over this. Uh, <laughs> while I did receive an academic award at my graduation for the Outstanding Senior Research Project in History, what they called a prior award at the time, my relationship with the college was uh, not always that rosy. Here's what I mean. So the president of our alumni association, let me just, where is uh, Colonel Mercado? Colonel Mercado back there, and myself, uh, spent the uh, spring of 1979 on aptitude and probation, up until the moment of graduation. The Marine Corps couldn't make up its mind if he and I had what it takes to be Marine officers. I was also guilty of a number of other minor offenses, and I spent most of the spring of 1979 out on the quad on 4th Battalion. So Colonel Mercado, Leo, and also my basic school roommate up at Quantico, as you know, Leo retired a highly respected Marine colonel, one of the best artillerymen the Marine Corps has ever produced, and he's also a commandant of cadets here. And they've kept me around for a while, so I guess that bet they were worried about in the spring of 79 paid off. I was walking tours, actually, on the Quad and 4th Battalion the week before graduation, when then Major Bill Gordon, who was a professor in the history department, came out to tell me I'd received an academic award. I was surprised. Uh, it did give me something to think about for the rest of the afternoon. Somebody once wrote about walking tours that you can have great conversations, they just need to be with yourself. And uh, so I had something to think about for the, for, the rest of that, for the rest of that long afternoon. I don't remember much about the speaker who spoke to us that morning. I do remember that I was thinking, I was worrying a little about a girl. So I, that relationship didn't survive graduation. So I was probably right to be worried. But it couldn't have worked out better. The, uh, the girl I ended up with is, is right over here, and we've been together for 36 years of marriage. So it kind of worked out well. I also remember I was excited about the next step in my life, which meant going up to Quantico to learn how to be a Marine officer. One thing I wish I had taken a little notice of then and I want to remind you about now, is this is actually the last time all of you are ever going to be together. At your five-year reunion, lots of people are going to come back, but not everybody. Many of you here at your five-year mark are still going to be processing what it means to be from this place and of this place. 
Our experience as a class has been that the longer you go, the more people come back to the reunions. At the same time, though, the process of living and dying make, will make it impossible to ever reassemble the class of 2019. You get to 40 years, like our great class, and some friends are gone, and we're going to have our 40-year reunion this fall. So I want you to enjoy the moment, think about it a little bit. I wish I had thought a little bit about, about it uh, that morning when I was there, uh, ready to cross the stage. You, the class of 19, have come a long way since your class was first assembled. One nice thing about being a four-star general is I can find out anything. And uh, in August 2015, the day you came in, it was 88 degrees, 70 degree humidity the day you came in, which is actually pretty good weather for Charleston in August. Actually, that's balmy. I got to tell you, it was a lot hotter and more humid in August of 1975. In fact, everything was harder in August of 1975. <laughs> now, you know, you don't have to completely agree with me on that, but we can probably agree on one thing. Unless you've been a knob in the South Carolina Corps of Cadets, you have no idea how miserable Charleston can be in August. So that's something that we all share, regardless of the degrees of, of pain that we're going to agree or disagree about. I want to talk just a little bit about the class of 79. And then I want to talk a little bit about your class and just say a few things uh, to you. So Cadet Valentine made a compelling case about what you've already done to challenge us for, us for the honor of being the best class ever at the Citadel. Even if we as a class aren't quite ready to give up that title up, uh, we think what you've done as a group and as, as individuals, you have, you have a lot to be proud of. Uh, and grads like me are very proud of you as well. So your work, your commitment, individually and collectively have brought you to this day to receiving the piece of paper that says you lived up to what the Citadel asks and expects of the men and women who want to join all the great classes that have come before to join the long gray line and, and go out with this ring on your on your hand in just a few minutes it's going to be on you to go out and live Citadel values and fulfill the purpose and the promise of your diploma and the weight and history of our rank through what you do after you walk across the stage this morning. I'd like to tell you how two members of, of our class did that. And I'm not going to talk about the, uh, the great names of the class of 79 that everybody's familiar with. Uh, I want to talk about two names that you might not be familiar with. The first, uh, the first classmate I want to talk about is Captain Kyle Edmonds, U.S. Army. Kyle was well known to all of us in 79. He was an O Company guy living next door to where I lived in November, Company of Pride, and by the way, the best company in the South Carolina Corps of Cadets. But lived next door to us over in O Company. He was a funny guy. He was competitive. He was a great person to be around. As I talk to you right now, as I look at you right out in front of me, I have a mental image of Kyle Edmonds up on 3rd Division, uh, goofing off somewhere right on the boundary between N and O Company. Uh, very clearly, I see him sometime our senior year. So Kyle died in December 1985 in an airplane crash in Gander, Newfoundland. It's a, it's a famous episode in our military history. An entire battalion coming back from peacekeeping duty in the Sinai crashed on approach into, into Gander. Uh, that's in the area of responsibility that I command, U.S. Central Command, so I'm very, very much aware of that all the time. I was a Marine captain then, coming home from a Mediterranean deployment in the middle of the Atlantic, and I remember reading the hard copy message traffic and the long list of names and seeing his. There were 248 soldiers on that airplane, so it was a long list. But you see your classmate's name there, and you, you just you sit down and you think a little bit about that. His loss illustrates the nature, the human cost, of the work that you're prepared to lead others to do. There are no graduates of the Citadel in this field house this morning who haven't lost a friend, sometimes many friends, over the past few decades. So Kyle is forever young in our memory forever a captain in the United States Army. But in his all too short life, he embodied the spirit of service that brought him here to this school, and I believe that actually ties us all together. I'd also like to recognize another classmate uh, and one of my roommates in N Company, Second Lieutenant Tim Ashee, U.S. Army, retired. Tim was here yesterday for the parade, but he had to go to another event today, so he's not with us this morning. But uh, I had a chance to talk to him yesterday. Tim's first assignment after graduation was with the 101st Airborne Division as an infantry platoon commander. In March of 1980, he was severely injured while training at Fort Campbell. 
resulting in paralysis, essentially um, almost, almost complete paralysis. After medically retiring from the Army, Tim received a graduate degree from Vanderbilt and then pursued a law degree. He's now a practicing attorney in Nashville, Tennessee. He may be the, the bravest, most determined, and gutsiest member of the class of 1979. Along with selflessness, which I just, just, just talked about, the will and the drive to stick it out and prevail, what you could call guts, are qualities which help define the essence of this diploma. And those two individuals, I think, are emblematic of it. One is dead, one is alive. But together, they certainly capture the high points of our class, and I think they're a great, they're a great symbol for you, to, for you to think about, too. I am confident that they will define your class as well. Let me talk just a little bit uh, about you and uh, a short message that I have for you. I'm not going to repeat the, the numbers uh, that have already been stated up here. I do see that uh, over 100, 170 plus or minus are going to take commissions in the armed forces. Some of you are going to be working for me this time next year, and I'll welcome you out there in the, in the Central Command AOR. I also see that 62 members of this class are going to be getting their diplomas from their parents or grandparents including uh, one from a classmate of mine here and from 79 a little bit later. This small college has punched far above its weight ever since the first graduate went across the stage down in Marion Square. Since then, Citadel men and women, men and women like you and me, have gone out into the world and they've made a mark that is deep and enduring. Far beyond the military contributions of the college, Citadel men and women have worked across all the professions, in the public and the private sector, and they have excelled. Why is that? I, I have a theory. Um, everything my class is and everything your class will become has been shaped here. Everything we have accomplished can be traced back to the four years that we spent along the Ashley River. It taught us the meaning of perseverance, of guts, and I think a guy like Tim Ishii. It taught us how to deal with and overcome failure. Because as you know, the college will arrange for you to fail at something. And, uh, but it also teaches you never to take no when there's a path that you can see and go ahead. And it taught us to love our friends. It gave us the very first taste of belonging to something bigger and more purposeful than just existing as an individual. Because let me be very clear with you. The biggest rewards in this life all come from existing beyond yourself. The less you use the words I and me, and the more you use the words we and us, the more you're going to accomplish in this world, whatever your profession, whatever your calling, whatever your situation, and the more ultimate satisfaction you're going to find. The Citadel also taught us, our class, powerful lessons about the diversity of human beings. It taught us this. People sit in the reviewing stands at a parade. They look across. They see the core. They see nothing but a big mass of gray and white across that parade field. Many of them think that the purpose of all that drill and uniformity is to create a phalanx of similar thinking robots. You all know better than anyone that's not what's happening over there. Nothing could be further from the truth. I've met more colorful, different, nuanced people at the Citadel than I have anywhere else, except maybe in a Marine infantry battalion. I was probably pretty weird myself as a cadet. You're going to be different. I was one of 16 English majors in the class of 1979. I know this class only has six English majors, so it's probably harder, even harder in this class. Uh, but the ability to conform outwardly by wearing a uniform also enables the ability to be wonderfully different inwardly. I had roommates, three of them are here today, who were very different, and they could probably say the same about me. But conversations with those roommates, with classmates, with good friends, those conversations, they stay with you long after graduation. There are people in this field house today that I can pick up a, without pause or interruption a conversation that goes back to 3rd Division Large Alcove in Company in the fall of 1978. Just without, without extraneous words, we can just continue that train of thought. And you're going to have that, you're going to find that to be true with your friends and, and classmates as well. I met my wife through one of my classmates and roommates. When duty, work, and distance allowed, we were at each other's weddings and at many other key points in, in each other's lives. 
So stay in touch with your classmates. It's important to do that. A couple of months ago, I did a big move from Washington, D.C. to Tampa, Florida. A couple of my classmates showed up to help, and that was genuine selflessness, moving a dog 900 miles. Uh, and they were very, they, I, I couldn't have done it without them. I've helped them down through the years as well. That's what classmates do for you down the road. And here's another thing. Even the classmates you don't like, and there are classmates you don't like, tend to soften and change a little bit over the years. Once, when we were going through some leadership issues down in November Company, hard to believe, I know, but actually it happened, uh, a very wise man once told me, classmates are nothing but an accident of birth. You know, that's true, but so are families. And like your families, you're stuck with the men and women on the floor here with you for the rest of your lives. Sometimes that's a frustrating experience. Sometimes it's rewarding. Every once in a while, it's magical and transformational. And you'll find that out for yourself. You've already had some of those. You'll have more as you continue down the trajectory that's set out ahead of you. You have a powerful bond here, ready to power your flight, your trajectory, into the deep and unknowable future. It's going to encompass marriages, children, careers, hard decisions that you're going to have to make, that you're going to want to talk to people around you as you make those decisions. All these things are ahead of you, and you'll do better at all of them because of your time here and the lessons you've learned in the classroom, in the barracks, with your classmates. The expression of what you are, what you have accomplished, and what you may become is embodied in something I referenced earlier, the weight and history of, of our ring. I put my ring on one fine day here, and I've worn it every day since. I never take it off. I wore it in combat, and I'll be wearing it when they lower me in the ground. Don't be like so many academy graduates who hide their rings. They're afraid of the elitism that it expresses about it, or they're ambivalent about their, uh, about their experiences, and they don't wear their rings. Don't do that. Be proud of your wing, ring and wear it. I also note that, generally speaking, academy rings are very ugly. They're nowhere near as good looking as this thing. So just, just, just an observable fact. Believe me, nobody's going to think any less of you because you wear the ring. In fact, what people think about the ring is based on what you do while you're wearing it. That's largely in your domain. We all together create the reputation of this little piece of gold. Some of you are going to be doing it on active duty in a year. Others are going to go out and find your way in the profession and in careers of service to others, scattered around this state, this nation, and the world. I am fiercely proud of this college, our college. I am fiercely proud of what it enabled my class and my friends to achieve. And I am proud of all of you for what you're going to achieve as you turn those rings around here in just a few minutes, walk across the stage, and go out into the world as Citadel men and women. I wouldn't trade a second of my time here. They were among the best years of my life, and they've powered everything I've done since then, since that Saturday morning down under the Magnolias. I'll wrap up with this. I've joked a little bit about the inherent superiority of the class of 79, but in reality, there are many great classes in the history of the college. Honorary degrees were given this morning to members of some of those great classes. You're going to argue about the classes for the rest of your life. Every man and woman in this field house that wears a ring has a strong opinion of what those classes are, and that's a good thing. Uh, you know, you should argue about it. You are going to argue about it, and that's not, uh, that's not bad at all. So I'm ending now as my classmates from 79 finished the job of making you Citadel graduates. Uh, it's meant a lot to me to share just a few minutes with you and talk about, talk about these things. This is your day. Enjoy it. My last words to you are going to be taken from an old Marine Corps toast, something we typically use when we end something and we begin something. So I'll simply say this to you as we look toward the future. Long live the United States.